Hey guys, how you doing? I'm gonna do a video on some wire repair for automotive vehicles. Go over some of the different style connectors you might need to use to repair automotive wires. Um, go over some of the tools that you might be needing to do the job. Well, let's get into it. All right, so these are uh, inline fuses. This is just a mini fuse. Here's another inline fuse. This is another one. This is, you don't see this very much. These are, you know, like a glass style fuse that you can use on automotive vehicles. You just don't see them very much. The most common one is like that if you're adding something to a car. There's all the different style gauges of wire. Um, let's get, uh, this is a uh, shrink tube. This is what Toyota recommends for their tire to, um, wire repair. It's good quality stuff, but you can get this stuff here. Um, now like Harbor Freighter or offline and it works just just as good this is just probably a little bit higher quality either one will work and that's for when you're going over like a buck connector like this if you're going over something like that you want some heat shrink over it or if you're doing like a this is solder if you're doing a solder joint uh, you want to cover that up so it doesn't short out on uh, either short to a power or, or a ground. Um, this is a, just a common butt connector you'd see. It's, this is, you would use like inside of the vehicle where there's no moisture. You're not worried about getting any kind of corrosion. Um, this is a butt connector with shrink wrap on it. This would be the style butt connector you would use on the outside of a vehicle like in the engine bay because um, you can crimp it down and then put some heat to it with the heat gun or a torch and shrink it down and it'll seal it up nice and tight here's like a one for connecting like a ground wire to the body or going to the battery positive if you need to add some voltage to something this one's kind of like a uh, a spade connector for if you need to make a connection and connect and disconnect. We don't use these a lot in the cars. There's nothing really you need to plug in and, and take back out. Um, most of the stuff is kind of wired to stay there. Um, here's a like a terminating connector, butt connector. You can run like um, couple wires in there and connect it if you're not trying to make a wire you know like you're going like let's see here like something like that you know or they got the that other style butt connector you would be going in like this and like that there's different styles Either one is really fine. Um, things we don't recommend, but a lot of people use in automotive vehicles are these things. They're called scotch locks or T-taps. I don't recommend these. Toyota doesn't recommend these. Um, but how they work is they you put a wire through here, crimp it down, and then you would, not this exact one, but you take a, uh, the flat one, spade, and then it would go in there, and that's how you'd make your connection to the wire. But, and then this is another one, another style scotch lock, where you run the two wires next to each other, and then it would crimp down here, and then fold over and lock it in. But both these are not recommended because they actually damage the wire. When they go through, they cut the copper core, 
strands I can show you here, real quick. So when this goes through and pinches on here, it's actually it's actually going to cut some of these strands, which is not good. And and then they can they're not watertight, so if there's any kind of condensation, it gets in there and creates like rust and corrosion, and then you get a bad connection. There's just, there's different ways to connect wires together in a T. Um, here's one of those other kind of ground style ones without the insulation on it. Here's a you know an open one for sliding on. These two that I'm going to show you, this one here, and this one here should never be used in an automotive vehicle. Um, these are for house wire and house wire only. You should never use these on a vehicle. That's not what they're recommended for. Uh, these are recommended for, if you look at this, this is a, like a multi-strand wire. That's automotive wire that's it's got some flex to it. Um, whereas this is meant for house wire that's like a single strand copper that's real rigid. Um, those wires can flex a little bit, but over time they'll they'll end up breaking. That's why, you know, in cars we want stuff that can flex around. Uh, let's get into some of the tools here. So things you'll need. Um, you know, probably most people have these just some some style side cutters for trimming wires down or what have you. Um, now these, these, before I get into that, here's some, these are some connectors that came out, I don't know, not too long ago, a year or so ago. Um, these are solder joint style butt connectors. Um, they have the solder and like a little ceiling ring to keep them watertight so all these do is you'd put the wire in both sides heat it down with a, a torch or a heat gun and it'll shrink shrink down and the solder will kind of come out into the wire make a nice tight fitting and then it, when it seals it's not going to get any water in it and it's super tight um, i recommend you know something like this for easy use and strength and durability um, and they come with, there's different size ones, you know. And that's just, I got this uh, kit here off Amazon. You know, you can use it for quite a while. Um, but yeah, so like, these, you know, first off for tools, you just wanted some kind of cutters. Something simple like that for cutting wire. Um, you need... Here. You have a soldering gun. This is just a cheapie from uh, Harbor Freight, but it works. There's no problem with that. Uh, this is an, some old wire strippers that I have that are adjustable. Um, these are nice. I use these at the house a lot for stuff. This is a style that you guys are most common found, something like this. I have another set like this. I'm gonna show you these these ends. Um, I bought these to use at the house, um, but I don't recommend these. These are from, I think, Harbor Freight. But I don't know if you can see how they, I don't know. They don't close all the way. So when you're trying to strip wires, you're almost pulling the insulation. You're not cutting around the insulation and just sliding it off. 
Um, so these I don't recommend. I, I think these need to be like, you know, for the truck, like for making wire repair out on the, on the road or something, but you should get yourself a better quality ones than these. Um, need like, I have a torch, just a simple torch here, um, for heating up solder or those solder joints that I showed you. Um, you can use a heat gun also. Either works for doing the sh shrink wrap. Um, this is a soldering gun I picked up, I don't know, not too long ago. It's a Milwaukee battery operated one. This one works real well. I recommend this if you know, you're know you gonna be doing a lot of wiring repair. Um, it's worth the money. And so these are these are the wire strippers I typically use. Just a Matco set. I've been using these for years. Um, I've never had a problem when using this to strip wires. It cuts perfectly fine. Um, and then you got your insulated crimps, your non-insulated crimps, and your cutter. Um, I don't know if you guys all know this, but like the insulated ones here the red and the blue would be crimps for like a blue like that or the red like that and then the yellow one or for yellow ones i don't have any yellow style ones here they're pretty big but that'd go there and then the non-insulated would be for something like like this let me see that non-insulated or you know one of these but yeah these work really well I recommend this style um, I also get yeah, you can get these little uh, like alligator clips to pinch onto the wires when you're doing like a soldering job they'll pinch and pinch and they'll hold it there and then you can do your solder what I tend to do is I'll just strip the wires back, twist them together, and then I'll use a set of just some vice grips and I'll clip when you clip onto the wire. And then you set that on your bench, it kind of holds it. So say this is where my wires are twisted, it'll kind of hold it at that angle, twisted, and I can solder. But if you want to buy the alligator clip ones, those, those work too. I think that's pretty much all I got for there's a lot more different style connectors out there, but this is what I got. And um, There's different ways you can connect wires. There's proper ways and improper ways. So I'm going to show you how to do some of these connections that I do at work. Um, and hopefully it'll help you out. So, let's do some different style connections here. What do we want to start with? So I can show you guys how to do this style connection, but first I'm going to just show you guys how to do a regular, you know, stripping a wire. So you want to find the right gauge wire to where you're not cutting actually into the threads, just like that, so you don't cut any strands. And once you do that, so, you know, a normal connection, do this junky. So here's an insulated blue. So common, you know, you can use the non-insulated. So we'll do it like a, we'll do with the, the blue insulated. Crimp that down. You know, and that's what it looks like tight. You know, you're not pulling that out unless you really you ain't gonna like that. So that's why I don't really care for these. I need to show you doing a with the there's gonna do the non insulated crimp. Crimp that down. And that's kinda what it looks like. That's usually what I do with these. So I'm gonna use this even insulated or 
non-insulated. I rarely ever use these. Let's see if I can pull this part. <sighs> that's pretty tight. So that's why I use that. That just seems to get it a lot tighter. So I ain't gonna be able to pull that off of there. That's stuck. All right. So let me show you guys how to do do a solder. Let's see here. If I can find it right. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is we'll strip this down just like that, and then just pull it off. And then you get it. Let's see here. Let's cut it like this. And get another strand. Like that. And so what I like to do is kind of spread this out like that. Kind of feather, feather all your wires out. If you just kind of marry them like that, kind of pinch them, and then do a twist like that. That gives you a nice twist. You know what I was saying earlier about using like vice grips, because you can kind of get in here and kind of pinch that wire. So it kind of holds your wire. You can kind of manipulate it where where it works. And so when you want to go do a solder joint, you want the you want the the solder to come down down through the wire. So it's best to heat under the wire. Like so, just start warming your your wire up like that. You know, just get it close. And as soon as you can just put, you know, once it starts warming up, you can just push the solder right through. But also sometimes you need to just kind of get the solder started by hitting the hitting the iron. So you just kind of get it going. The wire's probably not warmed up enough. Just like that. And see how it just kind of feeds in there. Pull it away. And just let it kind of cool. You just let it cool down. And like that's a tight, tight connection there. So so now we can do a show you how to do some heat shrink on there over the top of that. So I'm gonna crimp that back like that and. Make sure, you know, if you have this connected at both ends, make sure you put your heat shrink on first. But since I'm not doing that, I'm going to cut this down just so I'm not wasting it. Cut it in half. There we go. So just to, you just need enough just to cover so there's no bare wire. And so I just use a torch. And you, just, you don't need to get super close, just close enough to warm it up. Just kind of work it back and forth. You kind of see it slowly shrink down on the wire. Just like that. Let it cool down. You know, and that's what your connection will look like. You know, that's a good solid connection for inside or outside the vehicle. Clean, you know, professional. All right, so let's show you one of these new style connectors. So one of these here. So do this black wire. So first, again, you just want to strip your wire just like that. You get another section here. A wire, switch through, pull it out, and get that a little bit longer. 
goes through, pull it out. Pretty simple. So this, I do this, I do the same thing. You don't have to do this. I just, I feel like it makes a better connection. You know, you take that, twist it around, nice and tight, just like that. And then remember, you know, if you have connections on each side, make sure. Oh, I'm gonna need the blue. It's too big of wire. So. But yeah, make sure if you have your connections, you put this on before you start twisting your wires. So I'm gonna use my vice grips to get this pinched right here and just kind of get your solder joint here this one just over like the center of the wire and then your have your uh, the sealer rings you know still on the the wire and so the same thing, you can use a heat gun and slowly heat this up, or you can just use a torch. So, so just get it, you know, not super close, we're not trying to burn it, we're just slowly heating it up. And just kind of work around it. You'll see it just slowly start shrinking down. Like that. And eventually you'll see the, oops, got a little close. There, I don't know if you guys can pick that up on camera. But, uh, let's get this other side here a little bit. There you go. So these, if you don't let them cool down, you can pull them apart. So it's best just to let them cool down. But I don't know if you guys can pick that up, but they had the solder has ran out of that middle part and covered the whole wire and then see this is watertight now so no water is going to get in there but yeah definitely once you do this let them cool down they'll kind of harden off but if you try to if you were to yank on it right now you could probably pull it apart yeah this is kind of All right, so we did those connections. I'll come. I'll come back and show you this after it's cooled. Uh, so I can show you the. I'll do the the buck connector one with the shrink wrap on it. Let's see here. Let me cut this one down. I'll cut that off. You guys already saw that. And so I'll cut this off here and then strip that down. Oops, got a little bit of wire cut there. That's fine. Just trim it down so it looks nice. Then there's some more wire here. So we got that. Alright, so we'll do the one of these solderless ones or not solderless ones one of the ones without insulation so just go to your your uh, non insulated crimp area just like that and then you're just going to crimp it down nice and tight okay make sure it's tight and you're going to get your other wire you're going to pull that over and it doesn't matter if it sticks out right there. I mean, if you can get it nice and tight, that's fine. But the main thing is you don't want to crimp down onto this insulation or you won't have a good connection. You want metal to metal. So again, non-insulated crimp area. And just slowly crimp it down so it's nice and tight. Give her a little tug, make sure she's good. And then, see if this insulation is big enough, yeah. So then all you're going to do is pull your heat shrink over. Turn the solder iron off. And then you 
so I'm just gonna beat that so it shrinks down just like that And that's what it'll look like. Alright, so I think I showed you the newer style solder joints, a regular solder joint, regular buck connector. Most of these are, you know, going to be connecting the same way just by crimping them down. Uh, you know, a scotch lock, I'm not going to show you that because I don't recommend those. So now I'm going to show you how to do this multi crimp to get a nice tight fitting on there let's see here let's do I think a, this is the right gauge wire here here I'll do it on this let's do it on the other side of this yellow wire here I feel like that's a bigger gauge other there you go and so you just want to Put that on there like normal. And what you're doing here is you're you're using your non-insulated, and you're not going full for a full crimp. It's kind of like a half crimp, like that. If you guys can see that. So there's the first one. You're gonna go right next to it. You're gonna do another one like that then you're gonna go down to the last spot there and do one more and there's there's the first three crimps that's already really tight now what you want to do is get your insulated spot and you're gonna crimp from the side so right here crimp that down then move that next one down, and you're you're crimping pretty hard on this one. This you're almost doing a full full crimp. You can kind of work it back. Make sure you got all of it crimped like that. So now it's starting to look more like a square. Then I like to go, you know, that's probably fine, but I like to go, you know, back and just do the top on that same same one a couple of times, and then on the side again. Oops. So that's how you do that that multi crimp style, and then you guys already saw the heat shrink, but you could just put that over the top and shrink it down. That's pretty much all the connections. So you know, there's a multi crimp. Here's what that one looks like. After it's all done, you can see how all the solder is kind of heated up or cooled down so it looks, you know, all hard. But it's still flexible. Like, it's not going to break. You're not going to pull it apart. I mean, you could, you could pull it if you wanted to, but it's not meant to hold, hold someone up. Uh, and then this was the non-insulated butt connector with the shrink wrap. And then here was our solder joint with shrink wrap. So those are your, you know, main style connections that you're going to do. Um, there was that one regular buck connector. but So you make the choice. I feel like these are super easy and super strong. So that's why I go with this style. But you can go with this, you know, this style too. And then Toyota recommends something similar to this. But, like I said, if it's not warranty, I'll probably just use this. I think that's about all I got to show you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you like what you've uh, seen today. And uh, hope to catch you guys on the next one.